thanks for coming. Um, so I'm Madeline Woods, and we are here today to talk about investing in creativity. Uh, these are two words that you don't often hear in the same sentence, um, but I think they're two very exciting words, and when you put them together, really fun things happen. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, my background is in software engineering. Um, I worked at Square for about four years with Abdul as well. Um, I actually studied advertising in college, and I, in high school, I had a design internship uh, when I was 17, and I taught myself how to code when I was eight. So my path has been a little bit windy, um, but very exciting. Um, last year, I got an MBA, which is also very exciting and kind of random, um, <laughs> but it's led to many wonderful, beautiful things. Um, so most of my jobs, projects, and opportunities were the direct result of me investing time in things that I was interested in. Um, this includes art, so I also uh, power sand in my bathtub, <laughs> uh, create planter boxes because I want to see uh, legs on my plants, um, and poetry. Uh, so I decided a few years ago that writing was a very positive outlet for me, and um, one of the, the ways that this manifested was poems that I didn't even really know I was writing, because I just kept writing. Um, and so that, that manifested in a book. Um, but basically, if you invest in the things that you're interested in, uh, sometimes they pay off. Um, for example, in seventh grade, instead of buying CDs like all my friends were, with their weekly allowance, I decided to save up, and I bought a laptop. With that laptop, I started coding Harry Potter websites with my friends. <laughs> and eventually, somebody started paying me to code. Uh, who knew that was a thing that you could do? Um, who knows what happened to those CDs? Uh, they're probably in a dumpster somewhere. Um, so investing is basically the opposite of spending. Uh, when you spend things, you get limited returns. Um, when you invest things, uh, your returns continue to grow. When you're creative, you can literally do anything. So why would you not invest in that? One of the questions that I've been asking myself for the past few years is what would you do with one month and $5,000? Uh, this is something that happened when I started saving and I was like, hmm, I've got $5,000 and a month, cool. Um, so I decided to take this question and really sit on it and think about like what I would want to get out of that uh, time away. So I took a month and I went to Paris and I decided to paint. Um, it sounds very romantic and it totally was. Uh, I spent a lot of that time completely alone. Um, I decided that I wanted a break from my world. I wanted a break from coding. I wanted a break from everything, and I just wanted to see what would happen if I spent time creating and making. Um, I didn't put any other restraints on myself aside from make one thing every day, even if that's just a dot on a piece of paper. And given that restraint, I was the most productive I've ever been in my entire life. I wouldn't say any of that really amounted to anything aside from just learning a lot about myself and a lot about my creative process. Um, so I'm going to share with you some of those things that I learned. Start small. So I started off, again, with a dot on a piece of paper. I had some Sharpies and some printer paper, and I decided to do the 100-day project, um, which many of you might be familiar with, um, where you do one thing every day for 100 days. Uh, with my 100 days, I decided to draw portraits of Nicolas Cage. <laughs> so I really wanted to get better at drawing portraits, so now every time I draw a portrait of somebody, they kind of look like Nicolas Cage. <laughs> that was a positive investment, I think. Um, so I basically halfway through my 100 days uh, was my sabbatical, so I kind of had to hack it together, and I taught my desk mate how to draw so that he could help me continue my 100-day streak, and he did about 30 days in the middle, which was super helpful, and I came back, and I was super blown away that he actually did it. 
Um, and it was really cool because he actually kept continuing to do it and now he draws all the time. Um, another thing that I learned is to trust the process. So this is my very first website. Uh, <laughs> It's still on the internet. If you go to madeline.onza.net, um, I was eight. Uh, that is a picture of Ricky Martin. <laughs> um, this next one is an archive.org picture, so it's a little bit messed up. Um, but I was 14 years old, and that was my first portfolio website. That's a giant lily pad. Um, I, I don't know why I thought lily pads were really cool. Um, and then the last one is, uh, the square receipts, so I was probably 25 when I made those, and um, those get sent to millions of people a day, which is super exciting. But um, this, is, this is my process. It's super messy. It took me over 20 years, and um, you know now I can make websites. That's, that's pretty cool. You get them all in your email. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, it's messy. It looks weird. You have like, this CSS didn't even exist here. Like there's animated GIFs still back in that, you know, 1998 website. Um, another thing that I learned was to enable yourself. Uh, so again, a few years ago, I guess I was kind of going through a lot, asking myself a lot of questions. I was like, mm, maybe I should go to grad school and like figure some stuff out. Um, so I did, I started, you know, teaching myself like spreadsheets and numbers and math and the value of a dollar. Um, and I got accepted into a grad school program uh, and I was really excited to go. And then I kind of like thought about it. I was like, wow, that's $80,000 to go to this grad school in two years of my life. I'm like, whoa, what can I do with two years of my life and $80,000? Not to mention the opportunity cost of having to work during that time and you know, possibly generating income. Um, but I decided that the thing that I wanted to get out of that two years was essentially landing on something that I would build a company with. So I said to myself, well, $80,000 is like a seed round, right? Like, what, what could I do with $80,000 in two years if I just decided to start a company? Um, so I did, and here we are. Um, and with the knowledge that I wanted to learn, uh, there's the internet. So I decided to take free classes online. Um, and I found this really cool pro program called Smartly. Um, and they do a free MBA program. It was like a four month long thing. I had like a really rad crash course in business and learned everything that I didn't think I needed to know about accounting. And I really love accounting now, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, those are my tax deductions. And that's a spreadsheet I've been working on for three years, and I'm really proud of it. Um, so I guess another lesson out of this is just like think about the opportunity cost of the decisions that you're making, and like what are the goals that you want out of it, um, because that can really change uh, your course. Um, the last thing that I learned is to stay wild. A lot of times we can kind of get stuck in our heads and think about things a little bit too seriously. Um, this is a project that I've kind of been noodling on for, oh, I don't know, years. Um, I wanted to know what would happen if you made a burrito holder that you could twist up like a lipstick tube. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I decided to invest in a 3D printer, and this is what happened. It's kind of messy. Uh, it didn't really work, and it turns out I'm not very good at 3D printing or 3D modeling. Um, so I had a friend help me uh, do some 3D models, um, and you know, wound up getting a patent. And we're working on um, manufacturing some right now, which is also really cool. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> um, so you know, with this question, I just like to kind of make myself laugh with these projects and and like find things that. Um, you know, bring joy to people, but along the way, like, they help you learn. And with, which, with each step of this process, I've kind of had to think about, like, the design constraints with it. And, like, okay, so if I call a manufacturer and say, oh, yeah, I'll totally do a test run of 10,000, that sounds good. And they're like, you don't even know if this works yet. Like, maybe you should do one. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Like, okay, cool. Um, 
So with this question, it's like, how would you invest in your time off? What would you do with your wild and crazy ideas? I think every single person here has something really bizarre that they've been thinking about for a long time, and sometimes it's really embarrassing to say out loud or to even say to yourself. Um, sometimes it might sound totally off the wall, or you might think, hey, I don't know how to do that. I absolutely can't do that. Um, none of these things that I've done, I knew how to do. I didn't know how to code. I didn't know how to make a burrito holder or 3D print or draw a picture of Nicolas Cage. Um, but these are all things that um, I was just really interested in and started working on and doing small steps uh, every day. And the results are kind of surprising. Like it's really cool to see the compound interest of, of your sort of artistic portfolio over time if you think about it like that. Um, so now what? Uh, this is a mural I made up at the Instagram New York office. I don't know why they let me do that. Uh, it was pretty cool though. <laughs> I learned how to make murals. Um, but uh, basically, if you think about all of the things that you spend your time, your money, and your energy on, um, as seriously as an investment portfolio, if this was like, you know, your money, if this was $1,000 or $100,000, like what would you do differently with the way that you spend your energy, uh, the way that you spend your time, and the way that you spend your money? Um, we should be taking creativity that seriously because it's something that really impacts uh, the way that you view the world, the way that you learn, the way that you contribute. Um, and the things that come out of it is more than just a bunch of zeros on a spreadsheet. Um, you get like, you know, gold leaf on a wall somewhere in somebody's office. Like, that's cool. Um, we all get into our daily grinds of you know, going to work and burning out. I definitely went through this um, process where I kind of like hit this really dark spot and was like, oh man, where am I? I'm stuck, there's no out here. Um, but you kind of have to really think about like, what gives you energy? Um, you know, what, like, what would happen if you just put pause on everything that you're doing um, during the day and, um, like focused on something, like seriously, like dedicated time to it. You know, we put our time into our passion projects, nights and weekends, um, evenings, like in between things. Uh, what would happen if you took one of those projects and dedicated a full week to it? Put aside everything that you're working on right now and just say like, look, I'm actually gonna like go into this like wholeheartedly, give it some time, give it some money, give it a budget. like." put some, like, wrap it around like a serious thing and like see what happens. Like, that's, it's pretty magical. Um, and just by reframing your projects in that way, instead of trying to like, you know, penny pinch, I think we do this a lot with our credit cards and our budgets too. But if you actually think about what you're saving for, um, you can really come out with something uh, a lot more powerful, uh, an investment that'll pay off over time. So I'm working on a new thing. It's called Hello Walden. Um, we are doing just this. We're still in stealth mode right now, but um, we are helping people take creative time off to work on things that they're really excited about. And I'm so stoked to be here and say this right now because this has taken a lot of investment and a lot of time and a lot of just mental energy to get to the point where I can say, yeah, I'm starting a company, guys. So exciting. So thank you.